G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. Today's fish feature is on one of my all time favorite fish for tall reef aquariums, the scissor tail goby. So for today's fish feature, we're going to talk about the care requirements and everything you need to know about keeping scissor tail gobies or as they're also known, scissor tail dart fish in your reef aquarium. We're gonna talk about their diet, their compatibility, the type of tank that you need, everything about them. But first of all, let's just have a close look at the three specimens we've got here today. So you can see we have three scissor tail gobies in this tank and they're these elongate fish with the front half which is quite light, almost white, with the back half being black. Now these are particularly nice fish as I said, and one of the things that differentiates a really nice specimen from uh, some of the others is just the amount of color in the front dorsal fin. You can see these ones have got a little bit of yellow. Also they've got that really iridescent blue flash on their eyes. These are particularly beautiful fish. And you can see that they're swimming out and about they can be a little bit timid and you may see them duck into their little cave here. We've got a clam for them, but at the moment they're swimming around really nicely. So the first thing we're gonna talk about with the scissor tail gobies is the diet. Scissor tail gobies like to sit high in the tank and that's one of the reasons why they're such a great fish for tall reef aquariums. They really help to fill out the upper levels of your aquarium. Now, the foods that we typically give them are uh, planktonic type foods, foods that hang in the water column at their, and they're able to pick out of the water column. They don't generally like to eat off the substrate. Um, they really are a micro predator. So little um, things like brine shrimp, mice shrimp, fish eggs, things that they can pick out of the water column. So I'll just put in a bit of food here now, see how they go. So this is brine and mysis. And you can see how they really enjoy feeding in the water column. Uh, <laughs> they certainly get excited when there's food on. And that's one of the, the really cool things about them. They're a real, I think they're a real personality fish. Um, <laughs> they put their uh, rear dorsal fin and their ventral fin out when they're excited. And they really sort of to show off. Um, a little bit similar to the zebra gobies we've talked about in the past. They're an active swimmer and really beautiful in your aquarium. So that's the next thing we wanna talk about is the compatibility of scissor tail gobies and the type of tank that you wanna keep them in. So because the scissor tail gobies are a planktophore, they don't pick at things like corals or invertebrates. So they are definitely very reef safe. Probably the only issue that you can have is that they will sometimes carve out a bit of a cave on the substrate and in this case, they're living in the clam. They don't need a lot of space and this really doesn't cause any problems. They don't spit rocks around like some other gobies. So they're really easy to care for in your reef aquarium. They, don't, they also get along really well with other fish uh, and certainly other species. You'll never have a problem with the scissor tail gobies as long as you don't put them with something else that's aggressive. You can sometimes have problems with uh, scissor tail gobies and other scissor tail gobies. Sometimes oh, I do actually find that they're best to have in small groups. So uh, a mated pair is best, or maybe even three or four of them if they have enough space. They do like their, their personal space amongst their, their own kind. Now the size of the aquarium that you wanna keep the scissor tail gobies in is generally something which is quite large. They're not a huge fish, but they do like their, their swimming space. I would say at least four or 500 liters uh, is ideal. So that's 100 to maybe 125 gallons or so. But most importantly, they like their vertical space. So you wouldn't wanna keep them in a shallow display tank. Um, something which is at least sort of 60 centimeters uh, two feet or higher is ideal for the scissor tail gobies. And that brings us to the next most important thing about keeping the scissor tail gobies and the type of tank. You need to have a jump cover. They are a really flighty fish. They will jump out of reef aquariums or any aquarium if you don't have a cover. So a glass lid or a jump net is an absolute must for the, for the scissor tail gobies. So now we come to our favorite part of our fish features and that's where we talk about the difficulty rating of the scissor tail gobies. 
So with our rating scheme, we have one as the easy fish to keep and 10 as the most difficult. And the scissor tail gobies are a definite three. Now the reason why there are three is that they can be a little bit difficult sometimes to get a compatible group in your tank. As we said, a mated pair is definitely best. However, that's not something you can always just pick out randomly. And if you do go for a small group, sometimes they'll squabble a little bit. But definitely the main reason why we can't give them a lower rating is just because of the fact that they will find a way to jump out of your tank. If you don't have a net cover, which covers every part of the top of your aquarium or glass lids that they can't jump out of, they will find a way to jump out of your tank. If you forget to close the glass lids on your tank, they will find a way to jump out. So that's it for today's episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you've learned a little something about these awesome fish. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing. That's it for this week's episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Don't forget to like and comment on all our videos and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned to Gallery Aquatica TV for more exciting episodes to come. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing.